T H and Cura, and uh, this is going to be my agenda as well. So who am I? Uh, I am Shah Mohammed uh, from Sri Lanka. Uh, actually, the eastern part of Sri Lanka. I don't know how many of you have heard about um, this thing called Aragambe. So I am just living nearby this place. It's a nice beach for surfing. And I'm coming from the software engineering background, and I work for um, MSP in KL. So mainly for my day job, to 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 buy the food and accommodate myself, I work on Microsoft technologies. But you know, I work um, uh, as an independent researcher and also a kind of a freelance consultant on IoT kind of technologies. That's my website and my Twitter handle. Uh, before going to going into uh, my topic, I I want to introduce you. Like I don't know, maybe if you have already known about this, this is the Gardner's hype cycle. So this is something um, you need to consider whenever you want to go for a technology. Uh, <coughs> And um, these are the phases, and the, 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 the this last one is the one that has been like, uh, or you can say, okay, the the technology is kind of uh, stable phase and things like that. And now you can see still augmented reality is now in the disillusionment phase. That means uh, people have. Uh, hyped a lot about augmented reality and then tested a lot of stuff. People try to put whatever the buzzwords in technology <coughs> with augmented reality, then they thought like, okay, like what is actually going to work for me and what's going to save some bucks if I use all these things together. Then they realized, or oh, like at least they are in the realization phase of like, okay, now this is not going to work in a way that we were tested. And uh, maybe, yeah, let's try some real stuff on augmented reality. And now we can see a couple of really good augmented augmented reality uh, kind of startups uh, coming around. Uh, so you can see the IoT thingy here uh, that is not even come to this phase but it's gradually coming down so and uh, you can see I think you can see the blockchain that is also gradually coming down so in the exhibition area I saw one of the startups called this uh, flow chain or something they were trying to mix this both IOT and uh, blockchain together to <coughs> do something that's very nice and uh, you can also see this smart dust thingy that's still coming up so this is where I think most of the investors of the Theranos did the mistake I don't know like if you have heard about this Theranos story one young lady in US is get caught and she's behind the bars now because she was faking some stuff to attract more investors <coughs> that's about smart dust uh, so um, this is where the IoT uh, is in, and also you can see the, the the related technologies to IoT, the digital twin and uh, biochips. Uh, all these things are like you know in the in the same phase. So still, you can ask uh, this question: So why we need to go for this IoT, and what does it really means to us? If you say they are still in that. Uh, inflated expectation feed <coughs> in face. So I could say there are two uh, real reasons. Both these reasons are coming from two governments, as I know. One is the government of Germany, and the other one is the government of Malaysia. So both these governments drive uh, I4 or like Industry 4.0. That means both these governments try to drive the industry 4.0 thingy in their country by funding or like by giving a lot of support to whoever that comes with the idea so both these countries uh, are you know coming from the manufacturing back background and both these have the facility of the smart uh, like sorry semiconductors and things like that so uh, then I think as a policy or like uh, due to the policy makers decision or whatever they were forced to come to this industry 4.0 so industry 4.0 may still be a buzzword then 
but there are some definitions. So what is industry 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and 4.0? So 4.0 is going to be the industry that is like, you know, um, where you should be able to control the devices uh, remotely and uh, you should be able to kind of create digital twins and things like that. Actually, uh, industrial IoT is a super set of IoT. So if you take this IoT as a broad term, then uh, IIoT, industrial IoT is a small thing. I am sorry for this mistake of P. It was a error from my side. There's no P here. Uh, so uh, that is IIoT and, uh, you know, uh, Industry 3.0 was the main force behind uh, mass production, like all these mass production. But then, um, but people are expecting is uh, Industry 4.0 or IIoT will surely revolutionize the manufacturing industry. Like we may kind of end up in manufacturing very nanoparticles where we can inject into our bodies. Maybe they can be used like for the exact same cases that are used or for security verification or whatever. Um, and a main thing uh, that enables this IO IOT is the recent works, research and, um, you know, works behind big data. So when you say industry 4.0 and it has to go to digital twin and it, it's going to be remote and everything, then you need to be ready for to, to, to handle uh, the data that's flowing in a huge volume and in with hel huge velocity. So now we have the technologies to kind of, you know, uh <coughs> cater those requirements. Uh, this is about the edge. So this is actually the edge in as in not in cricket uh, But as in uh, edge in computers, but I purposefully use this uh, image because recently there's a startup in, uh, in uh, India formed by a former cricket player with the collaboration of Microsoft they came up with uh, uh, a smart bet so this is the cricket bet. If you are not familiar with cricket, this is the ball. Uh, so they came up with a smart bet uh, using that um, the cricket players can kind of learn or like can understand how they are performing or how they are handling this bet, you know. And they were using Asia for this entire purpose. So edge as in computing is uh, something uh, like um, a uh, distributed computing paradigm. So it's like uh, you have a lot of nodes and things like that, small, small devices. So like uh, they are running all over the place and they collect the data and uh, before sending to the cloud, they do process that data. That means the computation has been done from the data source itself. So that's where we call it as edge computing. <coughs> Almost all the cloud providers to provide the support for its computing, even Asia, I think almost in the sense Asia and AWS, uh, they provide uh, <coughs> the support for its computing from the cloud level itself. Um, yeah, um, and also, I mean, I don't know, but not by design of this edge computing, maybe uh, by some, co maybe because some due to some coincidence, like it is trying to solve some IoT security problems here in this case. Okay, uh, sorry for that trouble. So. Um <coughs> Because, uh, you know, uh, some institutions, uh, sometimes they are who are behind the government or whatever, they issue some notice to not to go for cloud, especially you can take the classic example of Malaysia. Malaysia's uh, Bank Nigara uh, issued a notice, none of the banks can go to cloud. That's one problem. And uh, in my previous employment, I was working with Saab, Saab is the Swedish uh, 
uh, weapons manufacturer so they were also a bit of uh, like you know kind of military technology they didn't like to really put all their data in cloud but they still wanted to do some iot kind of stuff they wanted to do deal with sensors so this edge computing uh, provides uh, kind of a way for them to you know cater the get the data from sensors and kind of have a uh, uh, in-house data center and process the data and things like that. <coughs> so this is kind of the architecture. I uh, actually get it from ResearchGate. This is the actual research. Okay, this is the research. Maybe you can go and read about this research if you want to understand all these jargons, uh, what is fog and things like that. So usually what will happen is in this IO, it, this is the place or like this, this blue uh, or like one layer behind this blue will be the a layer for edge computing where all the computation is done on the devices itself and you send the data to fog fog not necessarily be in public internet and uh, <coughs> it can be in your in-house data uh, center also then finally for like kind of for a global distribution or whatever you can send the data to cloud So that's about the IoT and Edge things. And uh, let's see uh, uh, Eclipse. How does this Eclipse uh, provides to or contribute to IoT? So Eclipse itself, you know, Eclipse as in the same IDE, most of you are familiar with in to write code in Java. So they have, they, they, like, they have this foundation. And they have like more than 300 plus open source projects. And they have um, special uh, projects for IoT. <coughs> Uh, especially, I mean, they have these uh, projects. They try to cater all these from devices to gateways to standards to tools to ontologies and security in uh, IoT uh, kind of technologies. So especially, um, you may have used this Eclipse Waho and uh, Mosquito. So all the, both these two are MQTT implementations. And uh, now we are in the phase of uh, going through the light apps, almost all the uh, mobile apps providers keep giving us the light apps, Facebook Light, LinkedIn Light, and uh, Uber also have their own light version. So <coughs> uh, MQTT is kind of a protocol that, uh, not actually MQTT, but MQTT also can be used to create kind of light, up light apps for light, lightweight communication, carrying like a small amount of data uh, with uh, low latency. So, uh, so uh, Eclipse uh, provides these two uh, projects for catering this MQTT in uh, client side and server side. So this is kind of a high, very high level architecture on what Eclipse Foundation or Eclipse provides for IoT, and uh, this is about the devices uh, uh, layer, and this is for gateways and smart devices, and this is for the cloud. So. On top of that, they provide the security ontologies and tools and SDKs for us to, for the end users to use. And Eclipse Cura. So Eclipse Cura, uh, you can just read it. So it's an extensible open source IoT edge framework based on Java's OSGI uh, protocol or whatever. And th this offers API access to hardware interfaces of IoT gateways. And uh, maybe uh, one interesting thing is um, this is an application container and a web-based visual data flow programming to acquire data from field. So that means uh, you may like, you don't need to be a real programmer or like a hardcore software developer to, to work with Eclipse Cura. If you know the functionality, if you are a functional expert, then you can simply use this uh, uh, data flow programming, like it's just about these blocks and stuff. You can use it uh, and use Cura. And also, it supports all the field protocols, for example, um, OPC UE uh, and uh, Modbus and things like that. So, one problem in Asia is uh, uh, Asia doesn't support uh, Modbus and OPC UE kind of uh, field protocol. So, it was a problem for the people to adapt to uh, Asia IoT because of these kind of limitations. Because Microsoft itself said they are going to support only HTTP, AMQ, uh, AMQP, and MQTT. <coughs> so then 
you may have to like uh, depend on any, uh, depend on any converters to kind of convert this data from a Modbus OPC, UA OPC classic to then MQTT and like it's going to be a mess. Uh, so, but Eclipse Cura out of the box provides all these uh, functionalities. Um, yeah, and also this provides this IoT cloud, uh, yeah, connectivity to IoT clouds through MQTT connectivity. So that means almost all the cloud services when it comes to IoT, like uh, in, in case of Asia, IoT Hub, so whatever, they do support uh, MQTT because that's kind of a very hard requirement for them. So using Eclipse Cura, you can simply publish your data to any of the clouds through MQTT. <coughs> And this is the architecture uh, of, uh, or like, v uh, where Eclipse Cura comes into the place. So you can see the, the, the it, it provides the device management and native support for M MQTT, and it support field protocols, as I said before. And uh, um, since you can deploy it in your own device or PC, it's network management it up, uh, is up to you and also you can do the remote management with IP address that's simple and OSGI implementation you can s get the entire benefit of OSGI with this Cura getting started with Cura so these are the ways uh, using which the first the first set of uh, blocks is how you can get Cura, you can use Docker. There's a Docker image for that, and DBN package, RPN package, and uh, Snapcraft. So if you're using Ubuntu Co, you can, uh, or like even Ubuntu or whatever, you can install it from Snap command. And this supports Raspberry Pi and Intel's, all the compu Intel's computing devices with PC of your choice, any PC. Uh, and this is the Docker command to, you know, get it. <coughs> uh, and this is the Snap and if you want to download it, if, if you want to get the DBN package, you have to, like, there's a download page in Cura. Then you need to just uh, download that package and execute it. So this is the architecture of, of Cura. Uh, so the, the based one is the uh, Java. It's th That's the, the very base framework. And on, on top of that, we have the OSGI application container. So um, I'm not going deep into this stuff but I uh, the, the things that are marked in uh, uh, yellow color boxes so the Cura wires is the thing that we mentioned earlier as uh, the flow kind of uh, programming model and asset management and asset management will be the drivers uh, sorry it will be the assets you put in the IOT and drivers will be the, 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 the drivers of the IOT device that comes with all these protocols. You can even, uh, if you have your custom protocol, your proprietary pro protocol, you can code it and you can create a driver for that one on Cura and do that. That's totally fine. Uh, so Cura provides the an administrative UI, so where you put all your applications and. Uh, like that UI will be like for kind of uh, easy to access things so you don't need to really work with all the command line stuff connect to field devices and you can send data to cloud platforms using the administrative UI and th the administrative UI is the one that provide you the Cura wires and configure the drivers so this is how the Cura wires will look like it's just a flow chart kind of a thing you have to configure a timer but you can configure it for every millisecond or whatever. Then you can say um, this will be an asset, and you can say okay, whenever you receive this data, you can put it to a publisher. Publisher can be a cloud uh, source or whatever, and you can even lo log it for your own purpose. Let's go a quick go through. I think I am running out of time already, uh, so let me quickly take you to that. So I have installed the uh, Cura in my machine using docker right so it's running port 8080 and this is cura so this is the cura's administrative uh, uh, ui uh, i said earlier maybe this is the first page yeah so this is what you see and uh, uh, 
this wire is the one that's that I said as the flow thingy before that. Uh, these devices will be, sorry, this device is your current device. Maybe you can put it in Raspberry Pi or anything. You can see the status. Uh, and these drivers and assets are the uh, devices or like the small sensors or whatever that's that are configured to talk to your main device. So these two are marked as red because I deleted these two devices. I will, I mean, I deleted the packages of these two device, uh, devices. So let me just forget about it. Then uh, there's this thing called packages. So you can use uh, Eclipse's marketplace to download exist uh, like pre pre-developed uh, uh, drivers for your uh, sensor. So in, the, uh, in this case, uh, Texas Instrument Sensor Tech. So this is a very famous uh, uh, a sensor or whatever. It has around uh, I think more than six or some sensors. Then you can pair this uh, using Bluetooth low energy with your phone or any kind of a device uh, to get like this has um, th thermal sensor, all the sensors, almost everything. So then you 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 have to just drag and drop that. That's it. It's not a uh, yeah. I need to install this. Now SensorTech driver is, uh, SensorTech package is installed. Now using on uh, using this package, I need to, oh, I need to <laughs> create a new driver. So now these two uh, come to back again because I have the package now. So maybe uh, if I want to create it again, maybe I can say STY, SensorTech Y. And now I have the driver, and using this driver, I can create a new asset. I can say my second ST, my second sensor tag, or whatever. And this is based on this STY driver. Apply. Yeah. So now I have created an asset that is the, the, the real sensor. So now I need to uh, create, now I need to listen to the sensors from my asset. So for that, I need to create a channel. I could name it as a channel for temperature. Channel for temperature. And uh, I'm going to read these values, yeah. And uh, value type will be integer, yes. and. Uh, Sensor tag uh, address is something. The address I need to find from my physical sensor tag. I don't have a sensor tag now. You you can put it in. These are the sensors. So uh, since I uh, installed this package, now my my system or the Cura knows what are the uh, sensors supported by this uh, device. I can say temperature ambient and when notification period is zero. And I have to just yeah that's fine. I have to just apply. So now it's saved. So now I can go to Wiregraph and I can yeah initiate with timer and uh, T0, timer 0 and uh, here you can uh, configure the timer. What are the intervals and things like that. I'm not going to deep dive into it. Maybe I can put a Wire reset. So wire reset is my sensor tag, and I say okay. So, and now then uh, maybe you can publish it to somewhere else. I don't have a component, so yeah, publisher or something. Uh, then what I can say is. Uh, publish it to any target so I don't have any published positions configured so using this cloud connections uh, yes save it using this cloud connection I can create a new co uh, new cloud connection maybe even I can use Apache CAML so that's out of the box provided by the Cura uh, or you can provide any uh, cloud service and send data to from Cura 
and also uh, some other interesting stuff if we explore into here you can see the web console for like configure the admin password username and the h2 database uh, to logging and also position service uh, if you want to position put this uh, place put the device in a particular position and if you want to like map these things in a location based kind of a graph or whatever and also this provides the out of the box rest service so from this you can send any uh, rest calls that's fine and also the watchdog service uh, this is like that's all this is not a like uh, magic <laughs> so that's all then you if you want to provide SSL or whatever that's also possible um, yes that's it about Cura but you need to really explore explore into this it's not like uh, you need to uh, really uh, configure this stuff uh, and things like that so that's it with my session uh, yeah thank you so much any co if you have any questions just talk to me okay thank you isham